All right, Shalom, another GMS on the go bet with another lesson, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Next, double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the ones that taught us the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akims. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Look, regardless of people here for a bit. Now look, this is part two on an um, ongoing series through the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. We are soldiers for the Lord. See, starting off with the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and the men on down. We're soldiers for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Fighting the spiritual war with our sword, with our weapon. Which is the words of the Bible, man. And our weapon is killing everything in sight, man. It's fire. It's burning them to death. Hey, and you know, soldiers take wounds. You know, casualties. That's that look, that's the thing of ours, man. And we pray to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai that we continue to be soldiers for Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. I got the brother Kabai with me. Shalom. And the brother Hawaii, you know what I'm saying? Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. The first scripture you can get, bro, is um, Acts 14 and 22. And we're just going to flow in the spirit, through the spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And look, and it is what it is. As long as you get it. Okay, come. This is Acts 14 and 22. It reads, confirming the souls of the disciples. Right. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. Right. And look, and that's what we do. Thus said the Lord, thus said the Bible. We exhort the men of the Lord to continue in the faith. Yeah, it's going to get rough. It's going to get hard. The scriptures say, prepare thy soul for temptation. Don't think it's strange, the fiery trials, which is to try you as some strange thing happened. It happened to all of us, man. So what the scriptures say again, bro? God, this is uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 22. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Look, don't give up. Don't look back. Continue in the faith. Fight that good fight of faith. Lay hold on to eternal life, man. This we look. That's what the apostles and the elders tell us. And look, we lead by example, man. We tell our people the same thing. The men of our nation. We tell them to keep fighting that good fight of faith, man. Confirming the souls of the saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites, which consists of these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Go ahead. It reads on, and that we must through much tribulation. Yeah, this a soldier goes through hell, man. Look at these different war movies, ancient times and nowadays. Look at the soldiers. They're on the battlefield. Bullets flying. Diving down. Um, grenades blowing up. Tanks everywhere. Rockets. You know, planes. We're spiritually and physically, we're going through that, man. Through the spirit of your house, but Shemel Shai, we're going through tribulation, right? right. What that last part say, bro? Done. Acts 14 and 22, it says, And that we, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Right. It's not going to be a cakewalk. The God of the Bible said, look, we're going to suffer tribulation, man. And I, and I got the definition queued up here. Tribulation, it's a noun. A cause of great trouble or suffering. You got these false prophets talking about it ain't going to be no suffering. It ain't going to be no tribulation. What the Lord said, in order for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you're going to go through tribulation, man. Look, great tribulation. Not a little bit great tribulation. You might even lose your life to make it into the kingdom of heaven. The scripture tells us, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall give thee a crown of life, right? We're earning our stripes now. It says uh, a state of great trouble or suffering. Trouble, worry, anxiety, burden, affliction, ordeal, trial. We're being tried through the furnace of affliction right about now. Adversity, hardship. That's that tribulation right there, right? It says a uh, reverse setback. I Meaning you're going to lose a whole lot of things for your how about Shimmy I was shy. Difficulty, you know, so-called bad luck, mishap, misery. Distress, unhappiness, these are all things that a soldier goes through. 
But when a, when a soldier's at war, look, he's only focused at the task at hand. Because if he's focused at what's going on at home and how his baby doing and all the, how his mama doing and all this other nonsense, that's when he dies, man. Many soldiers have told you, you watch different movies, say, hey, look, man, they show you, you got one soldier showing you the pictures of his newborn baby and all this and his wife and all that. Then you got another soldier, look, I don't want to see all that right about now. Right. Why not? Because I'm focused. If I, if I focus on that, I'm a dead man, yo. I got to have my mind set on one thing and one thing only, right? You want to chime in, bro, feel free. Now, I had a couple of precepts. When right. Finish. Bring them out. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, Psalms 40, 144 and 1. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war. Right. And my fingers to fight. So, so, Yahweh Bashim Shai controls everything. They're going to teach us how to fight. They're going to control our fingers. And the scriptures tell us, look, just teach the word. The Lord's going to fight for you. Look, we soldiers for Yahweh Bashim Shai. And our only fight is to bring out the word. That's how we fight our battles. That's right. With the words of Yahweh Bashim Shai, the Lord didn't never tell his soldiers to go gather up arms. The Lord just told his soldiers, look, grab this sword, a.k.a. this weapon, a.k.a. this Bible, man. You know? Matter of fact, what's that about, bro? Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, verse 14. Um, I, um, this word is a fire. I think that's it. If, they, if that ain't it, we can always look it up. That's, that sounds about right. It's uh, Jeremiah 5 and 14. It says, Wherefore thus saith the Lord power. See, that's how you know the, that's how you know you have Bashimel Shah control and everything, bro. Uh -huh. You have Bashimel Shah. We soldiers for the Lord, man. Go ahead. Yep. Jeremiah 5 and 14. Wherefore thus saith the Lord power of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. Right. And this people would. That's right. And it shall devour them. Right. And meaning what? This word is a weapon, man. Okay, going right back to Hebrews where you can get that too. Yep, gotcha. This word is devouring two thirds and these heathens, man. Shots fired, shots fired, man down, man down. Right. And it's all because of this word, man. It's all because of the words of Yahweh by Shimei was shy. The, look, the Lord told us to gird up our loins like a soldier, man. Like a man. Hey, look, look, he ain't gonna, look, he don't want nothing less. The Lord don't want nothing less, man. Go ahead. Because look, bro, our chief and commander is a man of war. That's right. The chief and commander is a man of war. You have a was shot. Go ahead. Yep. It says, for the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Right. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So this is our weapon. This Bible, this is our only weapon. Then you got other Israelites telling our people they grab the carnal weapon. Look, tap into Esau's blessing. Well, a soldier of Yahweh, but Shema was shot. His only weapon is the words of the Bible. And it's fire. It says sharper than any two-edged sword, man. It's the greatest weapon on the face of the earth. Go ahead. Yep, it says... And the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Right. The weapon that we got, it pierces through that soul. Mm -hmm. You know? It goes right through that flesh. Because a, a carnal man's weapon, yeah, it can, it can hit you. It can scar you. But then you can heal from that. But the weapon that we have um, been allowed to possess, which are the words of the Bible, look, it pierces through that flesh. It goes through the bone marrow. It's that, it cuts that spirit, man. It wounds that spirit. That's why these people are going crazy, man. You know? Because even when they, when they flee away from the scene, it's still slicing and dicing, man. It just continue to cut. It continue to cut. People actually losing their mind. People actually jumping out of buildings. People actually grabbing carnal weapons, putting it up to their head because they just can't take what this weapon that we have is doing to them, man. Yep. This is Sirach 28 and 17. The stroke of the whip mark of marks in the flesh right but the stroke of the tongue break of the bones look look bam bam then then people say sticks and stone may break my bones <laughs> but words will never hurt me look that was a lie right before they even form their mouth to even say that stupid sentence it was a lie man you know read it again bro yep sirach 28 and 17 the stroke of the whip mark of marks in the flesh wow but the stroke of the tongue Break up the bones. 
Or the stroke of a tongue. You know, the stroke of the tongue, man. The scriptures tell you that um, life and death come from the tongue. That's right. A.K.A. the mouth. If I may add on, yep. you can you can get uh, a shot, right? And you and you and you in the uh, uh, hospital bed, you were, you know, you, you know, they patch your wounds up, whatever, right? And you going to sleep, right? You get some good rest, right? But these words right here, these words that keep you up all night, right? You know, these are the words that have uh, uh, two thirds in these nations uh, trembling. Uh, 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 having cold, uh, sweating up in cold sweats. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Shaking. Shaking. You know, peeping all out the window. That's what these words will do to you, man. I got one. This is um Job chapter 38, verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man. And why does it say now, man? Because now this is the end, man. This is the end of the end of the end. Prophecy is speaking. Lord, get ready to come back. Now it's time to gird your loins, man. That's right. Look, we sold it for you. How about Shimei was shot? So a soldier do what? He strap on his boots and he tie him tight. We're on a mission right about now. Okay? All hands on deck. That's right. Uh, what is it? No man left behind? Right. What the killer? This right. Shit, what we going to do? What we going to do? Hey, look, man, strap it up. That's man. right. Get your mind right. Right. Get your mind right. Right now, man. We had a war. We had a spiritual war right about now. We sold it for you. How about Shimei was shy? I want to read that again. Job 38 and 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man. It means the loins of your mind. God. You know? So we'll be getting mentally, you know what I'm saying, spiritually prepared for the battle, man. Mm -hmm. For I would demand of thee and answer thou me. Because you know, Job was catching prayer hell. Yep. But the Lord said what? Gird it up. And plus, you have about Shimei was going to put it on us that we can't handle. If the Lord put it on you, you can best believe that you can handle it, right? That's right. What you got, bro? You said you had another precept? Uh, yeah. Uh, Sirach 2. Right. Uh, Sirach 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Right. Set thy heart right. And constantly endure. And constantly endure. The word endure means to make hard. Whatever comes your way, just endure it. Pray for more strength. You know? Constantly pray for more prayer. Pray for more endurance. Mm -hmm. This truth makes you hard. It makes you numb. When a soldier go, goes to war, he gets numb. Once he see a whole lot of people getting killed, head, guts, he start feeling some type of way at first. Mm -hmm. But then that's how you know the more and more he see it, he like get numb to it, man. It's, a, it's just a, it's normal now, you know? So things are becoming normal now. Seeing people catch hell. Seeing people get killed left and right, it's becoming the norm now to the man of the Lord. So when that day really do come, we won't bug the hell out. Why? Because the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures is what's going to keep us stable. You know? That's it. Reads on. Sirach 2 and 2, it says, set that heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Right. So when all hell break loose, don't run off the battlefield. You know? Grab your weapon and hold on tight. You know, the children tell you, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. I'll tell you that in Proverbs. I'm thinking the 24th chapter. If thou faint, meaning get weak, get feeble. You know what I'm saying? Break down like a little baby in the day of adversity. When you start catching hell, when the scriptures say tribulation, man, it's going to come our way. In order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, it's not going to be a smooth ride. You know, it's not going to be smooth selling. You know? Let these people keep lying to you. You want to. Let these false prophets keep lying to you. You want to, man. Yeah. You know. Gird up your loins. That was a bad scripture right there, bro. Okay. I'm going to jump down to verse 4. Right. Yep, so rock 2 and 4 says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And look, and yeah, we know it's easier said than done. Yep. Whatever you have, but Shemel shall bring upon you, take cheerfully, man. Because a whole lot of people are going to die out here, man. You know what I'm saying, bro? Look, man. Look, that's why, man, man, look, man, we at war right about now, but the rest of our people are all laxy-daisy, bro, yeah, man. like ain't nothing going on. <laughs> you better have the troops on the streets soon, where well, the troops are already on the streets already yeah. in certain cities, man. That's yeah. why that's why Yahweh by Shemel Shai is putting his spirit on his men to stay focused, man, at the task at hand. Because if you worry about everything else, that's when you get knocked upside your head, man. Can't be worried about everything else. Right. Everything else gonna burn soon, come right? That's right. That was it on that, bro? No, I'm finishing out.
Go ahead. Uh, Sirach 2 and 4, it says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Right. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Right. You when the God about bring you down low, just be patient, man. Just suffer through it. That's right. You know? Soldiers, all kind of things happen to a man when he goes to war. He suffered through it, though, right? That's right. He might get shot in the leg, might lose a limb, you know, lose a comrade. Right. He got to keep moving, though. You know, the fight continues, man. Keep on fighting. Fight that good fight of faith. Don't look back. Ain't nothing back there. That's right. You on some more, bro? Uh, yeah, first five is bad. Bring it on out. Verse 5, Sirach 2 and 5, for gold is tried in the fire. Right. An acceptable An men. acceptable men. Not just anybody, not right. any Tom, Dick, Harry, Larry, Curly, or Moe is, is an acceptable man. Right. Nah, only the elect of the nation of Israel are acceptable men in the eyes of Yahweh, but Shemiel Shai, he's taking them through the fire. That's that gold. You know? I think it's the gold of you fast, yep. which is the most precious gold. <clears throat> Well, the men of the Lord are going to be more present than that. But right about now, it's a purification process right about now. They're being purged. They're yep. being purified through the fiery trials, you know, which is to try every man. Don't think, don't think it's strange when you have about Shemel Shai start taking you through things, you know? That's it. It says, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Right. So adversity is coming our way. Tribulation. And look, we're in the midst of it. You know, it ain't coming. We're in the midst of it. Right. You get Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. You read Jew, right? One and three. Nah. Okay, I read that. Yeah, you got to get Hebrews first. This is Hebrews chapter 10. And I started, uh, he said 30. Uh, um, Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Yeah. It says, let us hold fast the possession of our faith without wavering. Right. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith, man. Go ahead. Yep. It says, for he is faithful. Because you got to think, though, bro, when a man goes to war, he has to have faith, you know what I'm saying? He has to believe that they can win. Right. That he can make it through, right? That's right. Because if you didn't have faith, you know what I'm saying, that you was going to... Because look, it's like you was going to war and you like, man, I know I'm going to die. You wouldn't go to war. Right. You know? Even though that, that could be one of the options. You done. But a man that goes to war, he has faith that Lord willing, he'll make it through it, right? Right. Same thing with us, man. We got to hold on to our faith. Go ahead. Yep. Verse 24, Hebrews 10 and 24. It says, let us consider... One another right. to provoke unto love and to good works. Right. It says, "Look, and that's what soldiers do, right? Yep. We consider one another, right? That's right. Go ahead. Yep. Verse twenty-five says, "Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see." The day approaching. Right, and we see the day of your how but Shemuel Shai fastly approaching, man. So we constantly exhort each other, telling each other to keep fighting, man. The Lord, the Lord is by, he's right here at the door, man. You most definitely keep fighting. You most definitely exhort a brother. You see a brother falling, you pick him up, man. You see a brother get injured in his spirit. Look, look, you uplift him, man. You comfort him with the words of your how about Shimmy, I was shy. We soldiers for the Lord, right? And that's what soldiers do, man. You get Jude 1 and 3, bro. Fight that good fight of faith, soldiers for the Lord. You know you got it. Verse 3, right? Right. Yep. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the com common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnest contend for the faith and look and to contend that means to fight man yep. you know look we look when soldiers go to war they doing what they fight for freedom right mm -hmm. we fighting to be free man all right a soldier goes to war to get free man you fight for freedom man go ahead it says which was delivered unto 
the saints. Read that last part again. Yep, this is Jude 1 and 3. Right. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you. And the, and the true soldiers are the house of David anyway. Yep. The true soldiers yep. of Yahweh, but Shemel Shot, is the house of David anyway, man. That beloved, man, the house of David. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. Jude 1 and 3 says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Oh, yeah, damn, bro. Don't the scripture say, um, give diligence to make thy call and election sure? You got to be all in. Yep. Can't let your faith waver it. Mm -hmm. uh, look, a soldier that goes to war and he's scared and all nervous, he's a, one of the first ones to get killed, man. You know? Go ahead. Yep. It says, reads on, Jude 1 and 3. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That's right. That's right. So we contend. We fight. We soldiers, right? We right. fight, 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 fight. Look, it's a spiritual war, though. You know? Right. And, uh, and that's the hardest war, bro. Yep. A spiritual war, that's the hardest war, man. That's the hardest battle. That's right. You know? You get second Ezra. If you ain't had nothing, you get second Ezra chapter 16, verse 74. Because one thing about Yahweh, about Shemel Shalom, he has always made a way for his soldiers. <laughs> always made a way out. Go ahead. This is second Ezra 16 and 74. Hear, O ye, my beloved. Right. Say of the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. Look, the days of trouble are at hand. It's war time now. It's go time now. The days of trouble are at hand, man. Quarantine, vaccines, plagues, death, destruction, famine, race riots. The day of trouble is at hand. Martial law, the hour of temptation, the days of trouble are at hand. That's why the scriptures say it's high time knowing the time. It's high time to wake out of sleep, knowing the time. Because salvation is nearer than what we believe. And at the same time, you got salvation and you got trouble, man. What does it say again, bro? Yep. This is 2 Ezra 16 and 74. It says, Here, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. Right. But... I will deliver you from the same. But I will deliver you from the same. Yeah, we're in a time of trouble. You know, we're in a time of civil arrest. We're in a time of anarchy. We're in a time of all hell breaking loose. But yeah, how about Shemel Shai? Look, you my soldiers, right? I'm going to deliver you from it. You know? I'm going to deliver you. You, you, gonna, you might have some bumps and some bruises. You soldiers, right? Expect the bumps and the bruises. Okay? Mm -hmm. Expect to lose some limbs. You know? But expect to get delivered too, Lord willing, through the spirit of Yahweh by Shemiah Rashad. Expect the unexpected, man. That's it, bro. Uh, nope, verse 75. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yep. Get on um, Mark uh, 1438. Yep. In the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 38. It reads, you, you ready for it? Yep. Yep. It says, Watch ye and pray. Now look, and that's what a soldier does. He watches and he prays. A soldier for Yahweh, but Shemel Shai, he's most definitely watching and he's praying because he's keeping up with the prophecies. He knows exactly what's going on. He's watching. He's a watchman. He's watching and praying. And, and if you ever seen a war movie, a uh, the soldier that won't praying and a soldier that won't watching, he got killed. Yep. You know, because he was focused on something else. Go ahead. Yep. Mark uh, thirteen, sorry, fourteen and thirty-eight. Right. Watch ye and pray. Least ye enter into temptation. Right. The spirit, the spirit is truly ready. Right. So I can read that over. It says the spirit truly is ready. Right. But the flesh is weak. Right. The spirit is always ready to go. You know. But the flesh is weak. So that flesh gets scared. The flesh gets nervous. But the spirit is always ready. That's why the Lord said, "Watch and pray." Yep. For the spirit is truly ready at all times. But the flesh is weak, man. That's why we got to constantly pray to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua that he keep his spirit on us, man. That's it on that? Yeah, that was it. You had something? Nah. Get 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, bro. Yeah, we sold it for Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua. So look, these are the things that we got to expect. We're, we're at war, Israel. Go ahead. This 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There have no temptation taking you 
but such as common to man. Right. So you ain't the only one that's being tempted. Okay? Right. It's common. Temptation is common to man to do something evil, to do something unwise. That's common <laughs> to man. Go ahead. Yep. It says, but the most high is faithful. That's right. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Right. You have about Shimei I'm trying to know how much we can take. They know how much we can endure. So they ain't going to put nothing on you you can't handle. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Shimei Shai, look, look. They know our breaking point. They know their soldier's breaking point. Any more to that? Yep, finish it out. It says, a way, it says, slacking, but he will, all, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Right. And if you watch any war movie, it seemed like that soldier was backed up into a corner. Had no way out, no way in hell that he was going to escape, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, you have a bunch of shot. Look, he get up out of there, man. So don't never give up. We even with your last breath, never give up, man. Right. Look at Meshach, Abednego, and Shamrach right before they hopped in that fiery furnace. They didn't give up on your how about Shemel Shai. Look, they were soldiers for your how about Shemel Shai. You know? Daniel and the lions then. Your how about Shemel Shai always made a way. And they was tempted, right, bro? That's right. To do some evil. To go against their power. Your how about Shemel Shai. But they said, nah, I'd rather suffer. I'd rather suffer for righteousness sake, right? Mm -hmm. Let's sit on that, bro. That was it. Let's get um Romans 8 and 31. Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Right. This is what shall we say say to these these things. Right. Read it again. Romans 8 31. What shall we then say to these things? Right. If the most high be for us, who can be against us? So we sold this for Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And if Yahweh by Shemel Shai is for us, then who can be against us, man? Who can defeat us? Is Yahweh by Shemel Shai is on our side? Nobody. Okay? Nobody. The Lord always came through, man. The Lord is always on time. He's never late, man. Right. You have a bunch of shot. It's never late. Get Proverbs 3 and 5, bro. Yep. This book of Proverbs 3, verse 5. Right. It reads, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Right. And lean not unto thy own understanding. And when a soldier goes to war, we trust in Yahweh by Shemel Shai. We don't lean into our own understanding. Things might be looking bad. Mm -hmm. Things might be looking like, oh, Lord, there ain't no escaping. Look, look, we don't trust in our own mind. We trust in Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Why? Because he can always make a way out of no way. Okay? Don't start leaning into your own understanding because that's when you start bugging yourself out. Mm -hmm. You know, a true soldier of Yahweh by Shemel Shai listens to the colonel. Listen to the chief. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You look at look, I, I reverence those old war movies, man. Yep. Look at the leader, man. The, the soldiers get all nervous. Captain, what are we gonna do, Captain? Then we're surrounded, Captain. And what did the captain say? Don't even worry about it. You're right. This ain't my first rodeo. Right. It might be yours, but it ain't mine. You yeah. just hold on, just do what I tell you to do. And look, and you're gonna be all right. All right. And then they do it, they take heed, look, and they all right, they make it home. That's right. This that's what you have about Shemel Shot is saying to us, bro. Any more to that? Uh, that was it. I got something for you right quick. Okay. This is Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 4. Isaiah 41 and 4. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 14. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. That's right, because we're worms. The worms are, are, are helpless, man. But the Lord tells what to fear not, man. That's what a soldier's going to do. A, soul, a real soldier of the Lord is not going to fear, man. Right. Because he knows what? He put all his eggs, all his baskets, and his trust in Yahweh by Shai, man. That's right. And the Lord's going to bring them through. That's right. The scriptures back that up. You know, has any put their trust in the Lord been forsaken? No. Right. Or body this fear has been uh, 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 confounded. Uh, confounded cunt, the water. You know? Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. And ye Israel, because Jacob's name was changed to Israel, man. After he wrestled the angel, right? And got that blessing, got that name put on him, man. Yahshua Allah. And that's what real soldiers of Yahweh are going to do, man. Right. Look, I will help thee. Look, 
The Lord is going to help us, man. Here it is, our people marching, right, in soldier form. Gathering up arms. Gathering up arms, right, to seek their own their own uh, 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 deliverance. Right. Well, our deliverance coming from the God of the Bible is only God's son, man. Plus the Lord said, a man shall not be delivered by his bow God. or his strength or a multitude of a host. So no matter how many jakes get together, if it's not ordained by Yahweh, by Shemel Shah, it's going to come to naught. Remember what the scriptures say, refrain from these men and let them alone. Because right. if it be of men, it's going to come to naught. But if it be of Yahweh, by Shemel Shah, you can't overthrow it. That's right. It says, I will help thee, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, man. So the Redeemer is for Israel, man. Those elect soldiers, those men, right? That's what the Lord's going to come back and redeem. Not every Tom, Dick, Harry, Larry, Curly, or Moe. Because look, everybody ain't soldiers for your how about Shemia was shot. Right. Only that small remnant, I got something else for you, bro. You can grab um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Okay. And I got this for you. This is Psalms chapter 18. Psalms chapter 18, verse 3. And it reads, bear with me. Yep. Psalms chapter 18, verse 3. I will call upon the Lord, yeah, how will by Hashem Yahweh Shai, who is worthy to be praised. That's right, soldier. But yeah, how about Shem Yahweh Shai is going to call upon him. Right. There's enough scripture saying that what? The Lord's going to fight for us, man. That's right. So we ain't got to look for a finger, man. A true soldier going to understand that, man. That's right. And let the Lord do the fighting for him. And we're going to call on those names, man. Right. Every time we're trouble. We call on those names when we're not in trouble, man. That's right. You know? Oh, look, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and it's safe. It says, I will call upon the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. who is worthy to be praised. Why is he worthy to be praised? Look at everything you lay your eyes upon, man. Right? The, the, the promising words that were spoken in these scriptures, man, of deliverance. That's right. Okay? The promises. That's right. That right there alone should let you praise the names of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's right, bro. It says, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Right. And that was King David, right? Yep. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Because we got enemies out here. Right. Look, look, Israel, you're starting to see that now. You should. And a soldier of the house of your house, Bashmi is going to understand that. They're going to take heed to that. And what they're going to do, they're going to call on their power. Because be a man that goes to war know he has enemy. Yep. enemies. Because why would, why would you go to war if you didn't? Right. You don't go to war against your friends. Right. You don't go to war um, against your enemies, you know? That's right. And I got this right quick before you bring okay. that out. St. Luke chapter, because look, we're on the battlefield every weekend, putting our lives on the line, being soldiers for your house, but shimmy our shy, doing what? Making our bodies a living sacrifice, right? That's right. St. Luke chapter 18. St. Luke chapter 17, Salakia, verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And this is what a lot of our people are doing. You know, them soldiers that uh, they, uh what they call them uh, when they uh when they um they run off uh oh yeah um uh MIA uh yeah uh, yeah it's, uh, it's another word though um but you know what I'm talking about yeah uh, uh, yeah like, dishonorable um some when uh we told when you just flee the scene yeah, you just, you just MIA um, yeah. a wall a wall that's right you know. A lot of our people gonna go a wall, man. Right, they didn't went a wall. Right, <laughs> you had a whole lot of guys. You know what I'm saying? Ever since the truth first came out way back in the late '60s, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Early '70s, a whole lot of soldiers, you know what I'm saying, fell out, man. You know, and we're back into the world. They stopped fighting for your how about Shimei was shy. That's right. So they wanted to save their life, bro. That's right. It got kind of hanged, bro. The tribulation, yeah. they started catching hell, bro. You know, adversity started coming up to them, right, bro? They started yeah. catching hell from their family members, their wife. Kids, probably the job. Yep. Oh, everybody, old friend mates, you know what I'm saying, yep. bro? Couldn't take it no more. That's right. The scripture said, Whoso, whosoever shall seek to save his life mm -hmm. shall lose it. At the end of the day, you're going to lose it, man. And there's a reason behind that because you wasn't being a true soldier when you have about Shimia was shot, man. Right. Now, that they wise or either they mama them telling them, you shouldn't be out there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Something might happen to you. Don't be out there. Don't go out there. That's yep. ain't going to start getting into your head. You're being tempted right there. You don't even know it. You know what I'm saying? What about your son? Right. The scripture says, prepare thy soul for temptation. Right. And constantly endure 
when there are changed to a lower state, then, then you got a regular job, man. You ain't got the big shot, um, right. Fortune 500 right. job, you know what I'm saying, right. that you had. You know? It says, um, it says, it says, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. That's right. So whoever loses their life, which is so just for your by shooting out shot. Right. You know, we're, we're pretty much dead to this world, man. That's right. You know, we, we, we pretty much lost out, man. You know, but, but we're going to gain our life, man. Right. We're going to protect it, Lord. We're going to be going to endure. Okay, we're going to make it to the king on the first go around, man. Lord, whether we endure, man. So it's a greater reward for losing your life in this world, man. That's right. Lord, tell you that whatever you lose, you know, you're going to gain a hundredfold. Right. Man. You know, and a soldier's going to understand that, and he's going to keep what he got to do in mind. That's right. You know, he's going to keep his eye on, 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 on the prize. That's man. right. Cause look, it's nothing impossible with your Hawa by Shmuel Shah. We quoted it earlier. Yeah. Um, has has anybody has any Israelite soldier called on your Hawa by Shmuel Shah and was forsaken? No, they was never confounded. Plus, I would rather be up under your Hawa by Shmuel Shah any day. The Creator of the heavens and the earth, bro, wants us to go to war for him. Let's let's get it in then. Let's get it in then. I got one. Yeah. This is Psalms um, twenty-seven and fourteen. You still holding that Ephesians, or you yeah, already read yeah, it already? No, all right, cool. Now nah, read yours. This is Psalms 27 and 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Look, wait on the colonel. Right. Wait on our general, man. You know? Lord, you how was shy. Don't try to take matters in your own hands. A soldier to try to... Look, you got soldiers, don't say they're like, I'm tired of sitting and waiting right. for the enemy. Right. I'm tired of sitting and waiting for the enemy. <laughs> let's get him, let's get him. He went out there, no saying, and, and stepped on the mine. Right. You know? <laughs> I got his whole um, brain, helmet, and everything else took off, man. Yep. That's why the Lord said, wait ye upon me. So I rise up to the prey for his determination. See, look, look, the commanding general is coming, man. Right. And he gave us orders, bro. You know, you don't want to get a dishonorable discharge for not following commandments, man. Right. Lord told us to wait, so we're going to wait, man. Go ahead. Psalms 27 and 14. This is wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, right? And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's right. And, and he said it a whole lot of times. Wait. The word wait came out like three times in that scripture alone, man. <laughs> Meaning wait, hold on. Sit back, hold on tight. Look, you're gonna get your chance. Right. You know, you're gonna get your chance. But look though, the commander chief said, hold on. Right. You know, hold on. Right. Dun, dun, I'm coming. Dun, dun. So, so you hold on, man, and you wait. We soldiers, man. And I got one, bro. This is a rock, and then um, we'll bring out two more, and then we'll wrap it up, bro. This is um, Sirach chapter 4, verse 28, and it reads, Sirach 4 and 28, strive for the truth unto death. And that's what a true soldier is going to do, man. He's going to strive for this truth, man, until his life is hanging in the balance on it, man. Right. And some of our lives will hang on the balance, man. That's right. You know? And we all know that's part of the, uh, the scriptures, the prophecy, that some brothers can go through that. And look, man, the Lord will put the spirits to go through it, man. Right. We're going to continue to fight and push for this truth until death, man. Right. It says, and the Lord shall fight for thee. And look, and the Lord shall fight for thee, man. You know? But the ones of our people that's trying to lose their, uh, uh, save their life, yeah, look, man, the Lord gonna have no mercy on them in that day. The ones that knew this truth, man, the soldiers that that, that knew this truth and and then cast the Lord behind them. Right. You know. Look, 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 bro, done for. Yeah, done for. You try to try to save your life. You want to try to go back into the world. You want to, and and turn your back on your how by Shemel Shai. Look, you ain't fit for the kingdom. Yeah. We're gonna bring out two more, bro. That okay. Ephesians. Okay. You get it right quick. Six and eleven. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, we're going to start 10. Yeah, I have the Spirit telling you to do it. Verse 10 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Look, look, finally, my brethren, those soldiers, right? Finally. Soldiers for Yahweh, Bashemel Shah, be strong in the Lord. Yahweh, Bashemel Shah, look, have confidence in Yahweh, Bashemel Shah, have faith in Yahweh, Bashemel Shah, right? All things, the Scripture say, all things are possible with Yahweh, Bashemel Shah. Go ahead. It says, 
and the power of his might. That's right. Look, look, we 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 go into war with, with power, man. Right. Okay? We serve the power of powers, right? Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of the most high. Look, don't don't a, when a soldier go to war, don't he have his shield on, bro? Yep. Don't he have his armor on? Yep. So we soldiers for Yahweh by Shemel Shah. So our shield, our armor is the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, right? That's right. And I mean, add in, you know, yep. when you see an ancient war movie. And they say, oh, they, they, oh, they blow a horn saying they're coming. What they go do? They want to go get their armor. That's man. right. Get their helmets, their shields, their right. swords. And then they, 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 they run to go get it, man. I know, that's right. You know? It says, Ephesians 6 and 11, put on the whole armor of the Most High, mm -hmm. that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's why we got the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, to be able to fight against the wiles of the devil, man. Because the scriptures say, um, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You know what I'm saying? We, we fight a spiritual battle, man. Wickedness in high places, you know? Fighting against demonic spirits and all that, man. It's constantly going to war, bro. And, and the majority of the men of our nation want the easy way out, bro. This is this the um, hardest battle right here, bro. A spiritual and a mental battle is way harder than a physical, man. You know? It takes some more strength, man. That's why, the, that's why the God of the Bible said, gird up the loins of your mind. You know, he told Job that. And Job was kept in pure hell, man. That's it. Uh, verse 12, verse 9, flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah, read, read that, bro. Yep. Verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I forgot that was in there. There you go right there. Yep. Then look, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, man. Go ahead. Yep, it says, Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right. against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world. Right. These witches and warlocks casting spells, demons. And look, that's what we fight against, man. You know? Yep. Shit, shit this place, no saying, was founded on witchcraft. Yep. You know, they got them different obelisks. They be challenging you know, them other spirits, man, them different dimensions. Yep. Different spirits coming from these different dimensions, man. Fighting all that, bro. That's what soldiers do. That's it. Nope. It's the on. It says, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor. Take, look, look. The, it ain't say just grab your shield. Right. It says, the, all, all the armor. Your helmet, your right. shield, your buckler, your boots. Yep. Everything, man. Yep. Chest plate, all that. Go ahead. Yep, it says that ye may be able to withstand it in the evil day. Right. And have it done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Right. And have it on the breastplate of righteousness. Then you know right there, you know what I'm saying? What's our armor? What's our shield? What's our buckler? Mm -hmm. You know? It's this word, the armor of truth, man. We soldiers with armor of truth. Go ahead. Yep. It says your feet shod with perpet, uh, preparation of the gospel of peace. Right. Above all, taking the shield of faith. That's right. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of, of the, the wicked. wicked. And that, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Right. Which is the word of the most high. That's right. So this is what we fight with. We saw this for Yahweh by Shemel Rashad. And this is what we fight with, man. The spirit of the word, man. Right. Which is sharper than any two-edged sword, you know? Right. Piercing even to the dividing of sun and soul and spirit. And joint marrows. It's a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Intents of the mind, man. That's right. And we'll get one more, bro. Let's get Revelation chapter 21 and 7, bro. Yep. This is Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. Right. It reads... Okay, yep, 21 and 7. Right. It says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, man. Look, look, you got to overcome, though. Everything that's coming your way, you got to overcome. Go ahead. And I will be his power. That's right. And he shall be my son. Right, look, look, because look, adversity coming, tribulation is coming. The scripture say, He that overcometh, though. Meaning you can't give up. You got to fight to your last breath, man. 
Go ahead. Um, say, the Lord said he's going to give him power. Uh, no. Uh, I said he will be his power. Right. And shall be my son. Right. One verse eight. It, um, it's, it's, nah, it's, nah, nah, nah. It's basically it, though. You want to go into it? You know? Yeah, yeah, eight, most definitely. It's kind of, kind of sloppy. It's Revelation 21 and 8. Because the scriptures just told us he that overcome if you have but Shemel Shah is gonna give him power. You know? Yeah. Gonna give him power over the nations, joint heirs. With Lord Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. Verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving. Yeah, the soldiers, you know what I'm saying, they was fearful. They didn't think that we could win the battle. Look, they didn't think it was there was no hope. Went back into the world, got all scared. Shaking and all that, didn't really trust in your how about Shai? Go ahead. And the abominable, right? And murderers, and whoremongers, right? And sorcerers, and idolaters, that's right. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn up with fire and brimstone, that's right. Which is the second death. So, all you Israelite men that fell out of this truth and stopped being soldiers for your how about Shai? You was all fearful, you was all scared. You didn't gird up the loins of your mind. You didn't trust in your how but she may shot. You're gonna take part in that lake of fire that burning with fire and brimstone, man. Which is the second death. Because the first death was the flood. You're gonna take part in that second death, man. So we're just doing a lesson through the spirit of your how but she may shot to exhort no sound ourselves and the men that's hearing this lesson, man. To continue to fight that good fight of faith. Lay hold unto eternal life. You know, the Lord says, strive for the truth unto death, and I give you a crown of life, man. Fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Soldiers get thrown into concentration camps. Fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. Be thou faithful, not fearful, be thou faithful unto death, and the Lord shall give thee a crown of life. Soldiers for the Lord. Shalom.